Hi, I'm Kristen. This is my room where I talk to my camera about things that I hope people on the internet will care about. And today, I'm going to be <laughs> discussing the new perspectives I gained while living in Hyderabad, India as a Minerva student. If you don't know about Minerva, I highly recommend you check out this video because I explain Minerva. I also have a whole playlist about it. It'll be linked wherever. If you don't know what I'm talking about, check that out. But also, if you just want to know what it's like to live in India, this could be the video for you. So I've been doing this kind of video for every city in the Minerva rotation, so if you want to see the other ones, I'll also have that linked. I've been generally doing five things that I learned from being in each city, and I'm going to stick to that for this video. I want to preface by saying that I think India was the most mind-opening city for me, mainly just because it was the most different and the most like obviously different from what I've been used to living in the United States for my whole life. So these might be a bit bigger things than what I've mentioned in the other videos. Okay, number one, I got to really see what a developing country really is and kind of like fully understand what that term means in terms of the reality for people living in a developing country. I'm using quotes because I know that some people don't like that term. There are other terms for it, but I think I like third world less. So I'm gonna stick with developing. I'm also not a big fan of like underdeveloped. So we're gonna go with developing. So the first thing that really struck me when I got to Hyderabad was that there were not sidewalks and a lot of the sidewalks that there were were like super broken and like not fully constructed. In addition, a lot of the roads were just dirt and I think that together kind of helped me realize how much of my reality is like overly constructed. And I mean that in terms of like actual construction, like the fact that I'm like so separated from like the reality of the like natural environment where I live is what really makes something like be considered a developed country because it's like you've developed such that you can completely separate yourself from the elements. So like outside my window right now, there's an asphalt street which goes right up to a concrete curb and sidewalk and then everyone has a like perfectly, not perfectly, I don't live in that nice of a neighborhood, but has like a landscaped yawn, lawn? Did I just say yawn? Has a landscaped lawn or like front yard that has been like man-made. We put those rocks there, we put those plants there. Most of them don't just grow here, and the ones that do just grow here are usually considered weeds that we need to get rid of. And that sort of like complete rejection of the fact that I live in a desert here is not what it's like in most of India. I will say that when I traveled to Delhi, there were neighborhoods that felt a lot like this, but the ma- I keep <laughs> skipping letters. The vast majority of India does not live like that. I'm sure there are other things, but that was like the really big one for me on that point. Second, I thought a lot about driving in Hyderabad because there wasn't really like a public transit system. So we just had to use autos. Autos, tuk-tuks, whatever you want to call them. I'll put a picture here so you know what I'm talking about. I think they were generally called autos in Hyderabad, but these things, you had to sit in the back, it's totally open, you're totally exposed to the whole traffic situation going on, and people drive so different in India than they do in the US, and yet it works fine. Like, it's equally safe to those people there, which really made me think about how driving in particular is controlled by cultural norms. So what we would consider a good and a bad driver in the US is probably the complete opposite in India, because the expectations for how you drive are completely constructed by like the behavior of everyone around you, and good driving is really about being able to get where you are needing to go in a safe manner, <laughs> given what everyone around you is doing. And so that's different in different countries. And so a lot of people were freaked out by the driving in Hyderabad. I kind of loved it because I like, I liked that it felt like everyone kind of agreed on how things were done. And it wasn't like people had different constructs of what the rules were. Cause I feel like a lot of like road rage in America comes from there being like two groups of drivers, like the drivers who want to follow the law to the dot and the drivers who think you 
should bend the law to get places faster. It's kind of a conflict in the US, and I didn't feel that in India, but I mean, I wasn't a driver, but I kind of appreciated that nobody was really like following any sort of law to the letter. It was a lot more about like getting where you're going efficiently. And I like that it felt like there was more harmony amongst the drivers in terms of like understanding how you should drive. Again, that might be a construct because I was a foreigner who was mostly riding in the back and I was mostly riding or I was always riding with like hired drivers. So like in taxis or like lifts or autos. And so that group of people definitely generally agreed on how one is meant to drive. <laughs> Three, this is a big one. Uh, white privilege and like colonial legacies, they're like super tangible in places that were under colonial rule for a long time. <sighs> it was weird being a white person in India because first of all, people stare at you a lot <laughs> just because you are white, um, especially if you have lighter hair. I didn't have the lightest hair this was the point where I was kind of trying to like put purple on top of my natural hair. Check out a video up here if you want to see what that looked like. But yeah, white people in public got like a different sort of attention. But the thing was that it was a good sort of attention. Like in the US, I'm used to like racism and minorities being that like minorities get treated worse because white people are kind of the majority in the US, so then like the racism goes to like smaller groups. So it was weird to see that like flipped in India where like white people are this like super minority and yet they get like the best treatment. Um, for example, in restaurants, like even though we were foreigners and we were kind of stupid a lot of the time, people would be like overly nice to us usually because we were white <laughs> is what it felt like at least. And then like the beauty expectations are a lot towards like what it means to be like beautiful if you're a white person and you can definitely feel that sort of like hand of Britain still in India like they still do like tea time sometimes some of them are into tea time and things like that and it's weird because it feels like a conflict of cultures that I'm not really sure what to do with so it was just it was interesting to sort of experience that in different ways okay four is related to that and that's that there's this sort of tension between like cultural traditions and then the idea of like modernization and it sort of feels like modernization is going to beat out on a lot of cultural traditions and I didn't like that but I also felt like it wasn't my place to have any sort of say in that kind of thing so the big example here is uh wearing saris saris are mostly worn by like older indian women and they still like wear them on the daily i think among like the younger generation it's very typical to wear them for like super special occasions like your wedding or going to someone else's wedding but they are definitely like phasing out because a lot more like european or like american fashion is coming into the indian market and it sort of feels like that newer fashion from outside of the country symbolizes being more modern and then these saris mostly being worn by like older generations seems to like symbolize being stuck in the past but then it made me like really sad to think that that might mean that saris and the like norm of wearing saris or it being normal to be wearing a sari is probably going to disappear and I kind of hate that. <laughs> sort of made me reflect on globalization and the idea that globalization is making all countries more and more similar and that I really value when a nation can like find a way to be part of this global world without completely letting go of their past and what makes them culturally unique. Five, to end on a slightly lighter note, India is where I was first exposed to bartering and the idea that you would like haggle over a price. Completely foreign to me, completely uh, foreign, I mean, like completely new, completely scary, especially because I have like some amounts of social anxiety or I get very nervous and have a hard time acting rationally and knowing what I should do when I'm interacting with strangers. This was rough for me. But basically, when you would go to a market of any sort, 
you would generally be like, what's the price of this? They would tell you the price. And the expectation is sort of that you haggle with them to get it down because usually the initial price is like not fair or they're like trying to like overcharge you, especially because I look like a foreigner. But so I did get to a point where I would feel okay about bartering. And then I generally had like a rule or some people say that usually you should try to get them down to like 50% of the initial price. I would usually aim to get them down to like 75 unless 75 is like I can't pay that that's too much then I would try to keep going and genuinely walk away if they weren't willing to go any lower but yeah that was a whole weird experience because it's also like an interesting psychological thing where like if you do literally walk away sometimes they'll like come chase you down and be like willing to acquiesce to the lower price which was super weird to me I didn't like it I was like I am so comfortable with price tags where like that is the end-all be-all but it's also like a really interesting thing to be exposed to that sort of different interaction with spending and then yeah it makes it like a whole experience and then it makes you feel like super like victorious when you do buy something that you like haggled down so I'm not a huge fan, but I think there's nothing like wrong with it. It's like definitely an A-OK -okay way for like that sort of system to work. It was just, <laughs> I was not able to get super comfortable with it, but it was a very interesting experience that I'm glad I had. <laughs> so that's where I'm going to finish this. I hope you enjoyed hearing a little bit about my time in India. I definitely would love to get deeper into some stuff about India and I do still have, this is embarrassing because it was over a year ago, I do still have footage from India that I haven't done anything with because I just have so much of it from this trip that I took in India to Delhi, Agra, and Jaipur. So if you would like to see that and maybe hear a little bit about my experiences in those places, let me know and I will try to get myself to go through all of that footage. But Otherwise, if you're interested in hearing more about my experiences traveling or just becoming a person, be sure to subscribe. I would really appreciate it. Also give this a like if you enjoyed hearing about my time in Hyderabad, and I'll see you next time. Bye! <coughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, my sneezes are so aggressive.